Luke still here? Is Luke back there? No? Luke left? Shelly, go tell Luke he's got the first 15 minutes of the radio show since he took, you know, all my time. Unless, uh, uh, just a couple of announcements here before we jump back on the recruiting class. Uh, this evening our team is being uh, honored at the halftime of the basketball game uh, for the Rose Bowl Championship. And uh, thought that was exciting. Also, out there on your way out, they have calendars of our spring practice uh, somewhere around here. And our speakers... Uh, for our coaches clinic, it's Bo Polini, uh, former Buckeye, is featured. Hey, Luke, could you take the first 15 minutes of the radio show since you talk so long? All right. Okay. <laughs> Go a half hour. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the days we're practicing and so forth in spring practice, so make sure you get one of those as we go. I thought it was interesting as you asked each guy, did you want more of this and how many of that could you have had and so forth? If everything that these guys wanted, we would have had to sign 30 guys. And uh, but that's the fun of it. Everyone knows what they uh, what they feel like they need to make their position group. Uh, we had 20 uh, vacancies that uh, we could fill. Right now we're at 18. Now, the one thing you never want to do is go over. Obviously, uh, one thing we've always done. I think I'm not sure we've ever gone to the limit uh, because we've always liked to have a scholarship on hand for. Some of those youngsters that uh, spend four or five years with us and, and uh, earn their way on to, to special teams and so forth. And probably in the last nine seasons, we've had over 30 kids uh, awarded with scholarships. And, and uh, so if we, would, uh, if we would end up with 19, that would be about perfect uh, in my mind as we go. As you look at the, the group, you ask Coach Bowman how many offensive linemen he would have liked. Well, we had pigeonholed two. I, he probably would have liked three or four, uh, but we could afford two within our budget. And, uh, you know, so we'll see how we end up there. Uh, you know, we knew we didn't need a fullback. We had two young fullbacks in Adam Coleman and Zach Bourne, and, and so we didn't need to, to have a fullback on the board. Defensively, when you talk to the guys there, the discussion was always how many of this and how many of that. Coach Haycock mentioned you always need one of those big guys in the middle and then obviously you need your good edge players and so forth but with the way the game's changed uh, you need so many guys that are playing out in space and that's why as you saw uh, as they described the players so many guys that have ball skills and athleticism and have played out in space and and know the game and so many guys that have played basketball and and uh, run track and so forth that those are the kinds of guys they felt uh, that they needed on the defensive side and it's hard to project corners and so forth. Uh, we've been pretty fortunate at Ohio State over the years uh, to find a bunch of guys out on the corner that, that uh, have that good ability to, to cover, yet come up and be physical and so forth. And So I thought they did a great job there. You know we talk about special teams all the time and, and uh, having a guy like Drew Basil come and uh, you know he can kick, he can punt. Um, we're even in some discussions. As you look at the evolution, having moved the kickoff back, uh, and it's a lot tougher to have touchbacks. You see some of the NFL and some of the college teams now going to a guy maybe that just drives the ball through the end zone and, and uh, you know, those kinds of things. So we thought having uh, another guy come in that's just got a tremendous, powerful leg. Uh, Drew Basil, you know, one of the best soccer players in the state. His team was, I don't know, in the top eight or so of, uh, in the state in soccer. And, and so we thought that was great. And uh, one question you asked Coach Sis about... Uh, the thing that uh, he felt Jamel Turner gained most from his experience at Fork Union, and Carlos uh, uh, could concur with this, uh, that is a tremendous experience for any kid. I think if you ever talk to Eddie George and you talk about what was a turning point in his life and, and so forth, but it was neat listening to Jamel Turner talk about the fact that really he never was a guy that sat and read very much. He was busy, played every sport, he was out and about, and uh, when he went to Fork Union, he all of a sudden gained a tremendous appreciation for reading. And now, in fact, in his eyes, he would rather read a book than watch a movie. And I asked him, why would that be the case? And he said, because when you read a book, you can create the characters in your mind. And in the movie, they create the character for you. And uh, so I think 
his uh, his learning curve and his uh, uh, appreciation uh, from a broader sense. It was a tremendous thing for him, and and uh, it's been exciting to watch how he's grown. Carlos Hyde told me that he really enjoyed learning how to fold corner hospital corners or something on his bed and shine in his boots and all that. And he said he was going to teach this recruiting class how to march. And he said he was excited about that and the leadership skills and so forth. And so I think uh, I think there's no question about it. If you look at the whole group, nine Ohio kids, nine out-of-state kids, uh, I think it's a, a good blend of guys, some guys that some of the out-of-state guys are so close that their parents can enjoy the, uh, the experience uh, just as well uh, as the folks from in-state because they're just as close. And uh, so I, I think it's a good blend of guys, guys that uh, are very interested in meshing. And, and I thought, uh, just so you guys know, I pour over everything that you show on TV and you write and you blog and you flog or whatever you do. Uh, I thought this was a neat thing when someone showed me, someone here did it. Was that you, Ken, that did a little comparison of our recruiting classes uh, in the paper? And and uh, I thought this made as much sense as anything. It showed how the recruiting services ranked them. And then it showed how this, whoever wrote this, ranked them. But I thought what was neat was uh, if this recruiting class can end up like those recruiting classes, uh, that's what it's all about. How do they come up and how do they mesh as new players? Can they contribute to the group in a certain way as a young player? And then they, can they evolve to become the core of the team? And then can they grow into leaders? And uh, it, if you looked at these recruiting classes that they ranked, the 2002 recruiting class won 86% uh, of their games, the 2005 class 84.4 percent. Uh, the 2008 class, which has only had two seasons, uh, 81 percent of their games. The 2006 class, 84 percent of their games. 2007, 82 percent of their games. 2004, 81 percent of their games. 2003, 82 and a half percent of their games. If this group can mesh in, which is something I think we like about them, their versatility, uh, their maturity, uh, their passion to be a part of this as opposed to simply, you know, what will this do for me individually? Uh, they're really anxious and uh, we talked about Verlon Reed being an athlete and so forth and, and you know what, he is going to be a big guy. Who knows what he's going to end up playing? We don't pretend when we're recruiting to know exactly what a guy is going to end up doing. And quite honestly, in the four or five years that these guys are here, the game's going to change. The game's changed a lot in the last four or five years. And uh, your league changes, and what are you going to have to do to, to handle Wisconsin, who's pounding it, and, and Iowa, who's doing a great job with zone and, and play action pass, and so forth and so forth, and, and uh, what people are doing defensively, and, and the intellect in the game, and, and that excitement to study the game, and, and the technology that's available, and you can become a smarter football player, and, and all the rest. So uh, I'm excited about this group. I hope they end up uh, as good as these other groups have from a standpoint of what they contributed to Ohio State, which is what it's all about. And statistically, you know, who knows what they'll end up being or doing or how soon or how late or, you know, all those things. Uh, we probably stood here in, in uh, February of 2002 having no idea what Troy Smith would do and there wasn't one person in the room that raised their hand and said, do you think he'd have a chance to win the Heisman? So who knows what they end up doing. It's what they decide to do and, and this is a, an unselfish bunch that is excited about being Buckeyes and I would be remiss if I didn't uh, make sure you know what a team effort this is in recruiting. Uh, Greg Gillum kind of heads up the whole organization part. Amy Burgess makes sure that he's on task and that we're doing things right and that we're organized well as we as we have people come and we host them and, and uh, make sure that we do things properly and then every one of the coaches in their geographic areas and in their position areas, and then all of their graduate assistants and interns and the faculty on campus and the administration from Dr. Gee to Gene Smith to anyone that hosts them anywhere, the people that make our stadium uh, the finest stadium there is, the people that make our publications and websites and all those things uh, go into uh, having a chance to attract the right kind of kids for the right kind of reasons. And uh, you know, we've, we've got a tremendous team. And the media is part of that team. 
And one thing our guys know is they're going to have a chance to stand in front of the camera if I let them. <laughs> and they're going to have a chance to experience those things. They're going to have a chance to grow. And that's going to be something they can take with them well beyond football. And, and so I think this is a pretty special place to be. And these 18 guys feel the same way. And that's all that's important. And uh, yes, there's one more out there that we still have interest in. If I keep talking, we might find out by then. But I won't because I've got to do my part. Luke gets on the radio. They won't even have time for commercials. But uh, with that question,